greatest common factor, the GCF as it's known on the streets. Oh boy, if we take a look at this guy, we're trying to pull out a common factor. What's the biggest number that divides both of those numbers? It's a 2. What is the smallest power of x? It is a 1. So what do I want to do? I want to write that 2x and that 2x. On this first example, I'm doing way more work than necessary, and eventually you will step this skip. But for now, so that we can be clear about what we're doing, what do we multiply 2 by to get 10? It's 5. What do we multiply x by to get x squared? It's x. Excellent. Uh-huh. And then over here, what do I multiply that 2 by? To get 4? It's 2. What do I multiply that x by? To get x? 1. Fun. And then, my addition is still there. Bam! But, boom, boom, this is the greatest common factor. So we see what they share. And what do we do? We factor it out. Oh, boy. So then I pull that 2x on out. And then what's left over on the inside? That blue stuff. Mm-hmm. Because that was not in common. That's your 5x plus your 2. And then what? and flower. But wait, there's more. We'll explore that one in just a moment. I want to be clear about what we're doing. So, so, come over here. Yes. We're right here. Old school distribution. And it goes, and it goes, and it goes. Ooh, ooh, yeah. So then, that's going to be 2 times that x plus 2 times that 20. See, what's happening here is now you have that common factor here and there. We're consolidating those guys, and that would be wise if we could write that 2 outside and those guys inside. Oh boy, it's reverse distribution. Now we reverse back to this institution. Oh no. Hey, wait a minute. Remember like terms? Like terms up in it? This is one more way to see this factorization. If I had had 2x plus 5x, do I have like terms? I do. So, what can I do to their coefficients, Adam? We can add them, for sure, for sure. And you would write that as 2 plus 5 times x, or more compactly. That's 7x. But don't look at that. Look at this. It's a factorization. You're pulling an x out. You're really adding their coefficients. So now we get to go to our first interactive example. Oh, boy. I'm here. It's good. What do I want to do? I'm doing the G, C, F. I'm pulling out the common factor. All right. So what is the common factor? Go ahead, click one of these boxes, and see if you're right. Excellent. Really good work. So, the common factor is going to be 10, because that's the biggest number that divides each one of those numbers. And then, what was the smallest power of x? Oh, they have the same power. It's x squared. So, x squared, right there. And then, what's the smallest power of y? One. So one. You pull that y right there. Okay. And then you go round these and you write the leftovers. But here's how I want you to think about it. Think backwards. Think, think, think. What do I multiply 10 by to get 30? Three. Yeah. Three. Tee hee. Tee hee. What do I multiply x squared by to get x squared? One. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. And then, what am I going to multiply y by to get y to the third? Right. Y squared. Why? Because if you have the same base and you're multiplying, what do you do to their exponents? Adam, what am I talking about? That shouldn't be a three. This should be a two. Oh, that's a smudge two. 
Yeah. So if we were to distribute that guy back in there, we would have y times y squared, which is going to get just y to the 1 plus 2 or 3. And we would have the original. So now we go on to here. We didn't pull any minuses out. So I'm going to put that minus right there. What do I multiply that 10 by to get 10? 1. Leave it alone. What do I multiply x squared by to get x squared? 1. Leave it alone. What do I multiply y by to get... Oh, what am I going to put here? Good. A 1. Because you need that placeholder. If you were going to distribute back in there and... Dang it! Oh, boy. And then... Some flour. You ready for a really tough one? Oh boy, look at this. That's 15x to the 2n minus 25x to the n. Eee. Oh no! What are you going to do? What I suggest you do is you go back, way back, to when we were doing too much work on that first one. Yeah, let's write out this guy so that we can see the factorization. Mm-hmm. What's the biggest number that divides each one of those? Correct. Five. So, you write the five. What is the smallest power of x? Which one's bigger? 2n or n? Just n. So this is x to the n. Oh, boy. Now what do you need to do? You have to get a little creative, because we're trying to find this common factor. It's going to be both in here and in there. So over here I have a 5x to the n. Then, what do I multiply this 5 by to get 15? 3. Tee hee. Tee hee. So here's that 3. Yeah. And then, what do I multiply x to the n by to get x to the 2n? I'm here to tell you. It's x to the n. Why? Because if you have the same base and you're multiplying, what are you going to do to their exponents? Add them. For sure, for sure. I'm going to go x to the n times x to the n. That's going to be x to the n plus n, which is x to the 2n. Woo! So, here we go. I still have that minus in there. Bam! Uh-huh. What do I multiply that? 5 by to get 25. 5. So I do multiply it by 5. What do I multiply that x to the n by to get x to the n? 1. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Put a 1 if you have to. Now what do I have to do? I have to point out that you do have this common factor. I put it here in blue. You have 5x to the n there and there. So I'm going to consolidate and I'm going to write 5x to the n right there. Yeah. And then left over on the inside, I'm going to have all that yellow stuff. This is 3x to the n minus 5. For sure, for sure. What's happening here? Here, if we distribute back in, which we don't want to do, because we'd be back to the original. Yeah. Here, if we distribute it back in, we'd be, uh, Greatest common flower? greatest common factor.